I uh, promised the other day that I would come back to you when the sourdough starter that we made the other day was ready to go and it is ready to go and then some. So I thought what better way to show you how to do it than to show you how to make sourdough French bread. I'm going to be dividing this up into a few different videos because otherwise we'd be sitting here for about oh three or so hours and after about the first 25 minutes we'd be going so what are you doing anyway um so i wanted to show you i don't know if you heard that little poof when i opened the lid but this starter oh yeah that's ready to go so i'm going to take my trusty wooden spoon and hello mark see you out there so I'm going to stir this up and remember if you've had your starter in the refrigerator you want to bring it out a couple hours before you make bread because otherwise you're going to be mixing it in cold. And so now we've got it all nice and stirred up. I'm going to put that over here and I need a cup, one cup measuring cup and I'm going to fill this. To the one cup mark not you mark the other mark there we go so i'm going to put the lid on this i'll replenish this later on but now i have my one cup of starter this by the way is the greatest tool i'm going to move the camera so don't panic the greatest tool for the home baker in the whole world i'll give them a plug it is a kitchen aid mixer um, I don't have the standard KitchenAid mixer. I'm one of those go big or go home guys. So mine is, I don't know, I think they have an engine out of a uh, fighter jet in here. But I can make actually two full batches of bread at the same time if I choose to. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to make the one. And the one attachment that you want is the bread hook. So, hey, there's Diane. Hi, Diane. And you wondered how all this happened in my kitchen. There we go. So I've got the bread hook in and I've got a cup and a half of warm water. Again, it's kind of like skin temperature, right? And I'm gonna pour that in here. And just set that in and then I've got my yeast. I need a tablespoon of yeast. Remember a tablespoon is equal to a packet of yeast. I'm gonna try not to spill it because I'm over my counter. There, actually perfect, okay? I'm gonna sprinkle this in here and we're gonna let that set for a couple of minutes. Um, it gives the uh, yeast a chance to activate that water and that yeast. It's like power twins activate, right? So I'm gonna take this, put it up. Best thing to do, put it back in the fridge when you're done with it, right? That way you don't forget. Um, so while that is, uh, going together, I'll have you know that I actually started this process about two hours ago. And the very first thing that I did, can't laugh at me, I cleaned the kitchen. And there's a reason behind that. Um, when you pull the dough out and you're actually kneading the dough, I don't have a big enough breadboard to do the whole thing um, up on a breadboard. So I use the countertops. And so... <coughs> those countertops are going to come into contact with food, stuff that I'm putting in my mouth. And yes, it's going to get baked later, uh, but you know, that doesn't give me an excuse to not keep the kitchen clean. Besides that, I'm going to have to do it soon anyway, right? Um, so in a couple minutes when that's done, I've got my cup of sourdough starter. And I did this beforehand because the uh, motor on this thing is so loud uh, and the microwave is so loud. You wouldn't have heard it. There's two tablespoons of butter in here that I melted. And so that's going in there. Um, let's see. I also am going to need my cup of water. And while this is waiting, I'll go ahead and replenish the starter. So I have my flour. And... Here's my starter. All I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pour in a cup of water. And then I'm going to pop the lid on my flour. 
and quarter cup. I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Okay, and that's going to go back in here. I'm going to get the spoon, rinse it off. I'm going to do the same thing I did when we made this. And stir it all up, get all the lumps out as much as I can. And then this, I have a new lease on life. I have three more days. Two, three days. Three days from now. Yeah, three days from now is Christmas Eve day. I don't know if I'm going to be baking anything Christmas Eve day. Anyway, it's all cleaned up. All looking nice. And I can put Mr. Icky Spoon in the sink. And then just put the lid on this and we're back. All right, so this has pretty much settled in. If I took the camera and pointed it down there, you'd see that most of that yeast is really moist. So I'm gonna pour in my butter, and that goes in the sink. I'm gonna pour in my sourdough starter. Okay, that goes in the sink. And then let's see, I need two tablespoons of sugar. So I have my sugar container here. So there's one. And two. Okay. And I also need two teaspoons of salt. I didn't get the salt out. I tried to get everything all out, but I didn't think of everything. Okay, so. Here we go. Two teaspoons of salt. You need to get stepped on. Harley decided he's gonna come pay me a visit in the kitchen. He sees dad's talking to himself. What's the crazy old man doing? Okay, so I got two teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna take any salt and sugar and stuff that I spilled and I'm gonna scoop that up because I don't want that getting in the bread because this is where I'm gonna be kneading dough. Um, okay, so we've got this all up. All that's in there. And I'm gonna start this. I apologize if this is too loud. Hopefully it won't be. Okay. So I've got that going and I need, let's see, a total of five to six cups of flour. I'm only gonna do five and a half. So I've got half cups. But I'm gonna start off with four. So I'm gonna do eight of these. I'm gonna go one, two, Three, four, I know you're bored. Don't be. Five, six, seven, ooh, almost lost a cup. And they say there's no action in the kitchen. There we go. There's eight. Okay. Go. And take that out. I may get out one of my nice little scrapers and kind of push everything down. I'm going to turn this up a little bit higher, apologize at the club. And we're just going to let that run for a couple minutes. And what that's going to do is all that flour that I put in there is going to get mixed up and it's just going to be, it's going to be a dough, but it's not going to be even loose enough to pull out. So when you look down in here and you start seeing it stick to the sides, you can turn it back down a little bit, let it get mixed up. And so I put four cups in, so I actually have two more, so I've got three more of these before I pull it out. So I'm going to do it down to the lowest level. Ooh, there, that's a really good shape. I may have to stop this because she's probably out in the garage and needs help bringing stuff in. But I can't really stop in the middle of this. All right, so that's at the slowest it can go. It's got a five and a half cups total in there. And I'm just gonna let this go and I'm gonna let the machine do the work.
Um, and then that's going to save my arms and my wrists a whole lot when it comes time to knead this stuff. Anyway, um, after this is kneaded, when I pull it out of the bowl, um, after you get it kneaded, you have to grease up the bowl with Crisco and you put it in and twist it around and you get it in the bowl and you cover the bowl and you leave it sit for an hour to an hour and a half. So that's going to be there for a little while. Um, so I'll probably check with you guys in about an hour and a half, show you what it looks like coming out of the bowl. Um, anyway, you guys uh, take care and we'll uh, catch you in a bit, hopefully. Bye. I wound up having to stop earlier, a little bit earlier than I wanted to because, yeah, Carla Sue got home and she needed some help hauling stuff in. So you got priorities, right? Anyway, what I did after we finished up, I came back in and... The uh, dough was just like not even sticking to the bowl. It was wrapping around when the, with the hook. When you see that, it's time to take it out. So I went ahead and took it out and I put that last half cup of flour that gave us his full six cups, set it here on the counter, and I just kneaded that for about eight to 10 minutes. It says you're supposed to knead it for about 15, but if you leave it in that big old mixer for, oh, a good 10 minutes or so, the machine will do most of the work for you. Anyway, I will um, take you over here and show you. Let's see. Ta-da. There we go. I've since taken it out of the oven. Or not the oven. Taken it out of the bowl. Punched down the dough. And then covered it up. And it's got about four more minutes to be covered up. And while that's happening, we'll get back to the... There we go. Yeah, close enough. And it's a little off. Just like me, it's a little off. Um, hey, there's Lori. Yes, I'm still trying to learn how this camera thing works on here. Anyway, so what I have here, this is the pan that I'm going to bake it in. Uh, you can see that it's got holes in it. That lets the heat go through. And it has two channels in it for two French loaves. I also have my magic little... Big old thing of Crisco. And I'm going to get a paper towel. Hang on one second, I know where I put them. I was cleaning in the other room because I have company coming over and they get fresh bread with dinner. Um, so I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna drop it down in here. And just scoop out. Doesn't have to be a whole lot because all we want to do is we want to coat this. We don't want to leave this like big old chunks of grease hanging on it. We just want to coat it. Get a little bit slick. Going through in here. And I'm going to do that one more time with the other channel. Get that all nice and coated. Hey, Bob. See, Bob's got to come out here and get some of that homemade bread. Um... Hope you are uh, recovering well. Bob recently had a cardiac event and I don't like it when friends have cardiac events because sometimes there's a bad ending. But Bob's was a happy ending. There we go. So the next thing I do after I've got it greased down is I have just regular old cornmeal. And I'm going to pull out a handful of it. I'm actually gonna turn around behind me and do this over the sink because otherwise cornmeal gets everywhere. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to sprinkle it like sentence through the hourglass. These are the days of our life. So, all right. So I've got that all on there. And there's just a thin coat of cornmeal on there. And that is going to let those loaves, when they're done baking, just slide right off. And we have about a minute and a half left. Oh, I'll get this put up. I kind of like to put things away as I use them. See, by the time we get done, you guys can all come over and bake in my kitchen because you'll know where everything is. So once we're done with this, after we've fashioned the loaves, I'm going to cover it back up. When I put it in the bowl and set it to rise, I used a sheet of press and seal and then put a towel over that but I can't use press and seal on top of this because it'll be touching the 
roll or the dough directly. So I'm just going to cover it up with the towel. And we're down to 30 seconds, which is pretty darn close. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the bowl. I'm going to take the bowl and set it over in the sink. That's going to get washed. And now you can take a look at the dough. There's the dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that into two equal pieces. And good try I got a big old knife. Promise not to cut myself. Oh, there goes my alarm. And if I don't get it, I will come back and beep again. So I've got two half loaves. I'm just going to take one of these and I'm going to roll it with my hands. Start with the middle and you work your way out. And the only thing is you don't want to get this any wider or longer than the pan. But you want it kind of even. And so by the time you get done, you've got that. And so that fits right in there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And if it looks like there's... Uh, the dough is separating a little bit. Just pinch it together. So there's the other one. So now I have both of them. I'm going to just take this. I'm going to cover them up. I'm going to set them over here on top of the stove. And I already have the stove at 170 to kind of keep it, get it warmed up. Because that's what the bread was sitting on. I'm going to click cancel, bake, and it starts at 350. I want that to go up to 350 because when we're done with that, that's when it goes in the oven. Anyway, um, that's going to be about an hour from now. I probably won't do uh, another video when it goes in the oven. Uh, before it goes in the oven, all you have to do is spray it down with a spray water bottle, which I have one of these. And I put bottled water in it. And you spray down the loaves and you take like this knife or preferably you're supposed to use a... a, a uh, like a razor blade, but that knife will work. And you do three diagonal slits on each of the loaves. Then, uh, um, after you've sprayed it and then made the slits, then it goes in the oven. And it's supposed to go in the oven for, let's see, I think it's 32, yeah, 30 to 35 minutes. So I cut it right in half and do 32, 30. And uh, so the next video that you'll see is bread coming out of the oven. Anyway, you guys take care. God bless. So in about 30 seconds, the timer's going to go beep. I'm going to go get bread out of the oven. If you guys were here, you just you would be drooling. It smells so good in here. Um, unless you don't like the smell of sourdough bread. Amen. Oh, that would be my lovely wife. Um, but uh, anyway, at least the smell is not permeating out that way too much. Um, Anyway, so let's see, 10, 9, oh, we could be like SpaceX, okay. Wait, they didn't launch today. Okay, 2, 1, and there we go. And now, as I pull these out, you can see we have wonderful homemade French bread. Oh, there's Eddie. I promised Eddie he was going to get one of these. So, uh, yeah, Eddie, if you're uh, watching, um, still watching, go on out to the fence in about five minutes and I'll, I won't, I won't throw it like a football because that would be bad. Um, but I'll send one over across to you. Anyway, you guys have a great day. God bless. Bye.